I'm Cathy Elliman and this is Amaria Life, brought to you by Remax Paraiso, the professionals in property sales and purchases here on the Costa Almeria, and bringing you an insight into life here on the Costa Almeria. And today, I think it's a bit special today actually, I'm in a recording studio with a rock star, which is really exciting. I'm here with Kev Moore, well, AKA, AKA Kev the Bass. Kev the Bass. Kev the Bass, who bass player with BC Sweet. BC Sweet. Yeah. With Christy. Uh -huh. With Witch Cross. Yeah. Vocalist, songwriter, writer, artist, all round creative person. But probably known best for being for being in the bands. The big the big bands. Yeah, for the, the 70s stuff, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Probably best known for that, yeah. So what's happening at the moment then with uh, on the bass playing band front. Well, it's I'm quite busy at the moment. Um, in fact, not not so much on on the bass uh, at the moment because I, I front Witch Cross as the lead singer. Right, um, right. Although I do a lot of writing for for the band, um, it's kind of important with a, a band like Witch Cross, which is a, a heavy metal band, to have that that front man uh, unencumbered by an instrument. You know. Uh, which uh, it's not to say it's particularly easy because I, you wonder what to do with your hands, you know. But I'm, I'm getting used to that. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm fronting uh, Witch Cross, and we've just kind of um, we're on a bit of a roll at the moment because the, the band reformed thanks to a, an article in a in a French metal magazine oh, yeah. back in 2012, uh, which was focusing on the reissuing by an American label of, of the 1984 album that the band made. Uh, which became a, a cult classic and then the band disbanded. Uh, I wasn't with them at the time but I, I've done a lot of work with the guitarist Mike and um, when the band sort of decided hey we're going to get back together again he asked if I'd like to, to front it and, and write the new album so uh, so that's what we did and, and we kind of made our debut appearance some 30 odd years or whatever after the initial album um, uh, at the Keep It True Festival in Germany, and it was just amazing. The fans just came out of the woodwork, and uh, we have a sort of ready-made fan base, which is which is amazing, really. And the longest time, probably in history, between the first and second albums, like a thirty-year <laughs> gap. So we, we had to get it right. You know. <laughs> High um, expectations. High expectations, <laughs> yeah. indeed. Yeah, yeah. And the the route we went was, uh, we decided not to to really develop the band sound, but rather capture what the band was at, at, at that time and what the next album might have been in, say, 1985. So that was quite a hard job, in fact, given the temptations of technology nowadays, to, to try and capture that 80s metal vibe, when, when metal was probably a little more mainstream than it is today. Yeah. Um, and we tried to keep that, you know, with powerful songs and, and, and just a quite an organic sort of sound. Uh, but we feel we, we did a good job and we're happy with it. And it's real music, isn't it? It's real music. It's real Those music. Don't yeah, it. it's people who really do know how to play this array of guitars I've got around me. Yeah. You know, it isn't just it isn't just machines that produce this sound, is it? Because you no. you're expected to get up on stage and 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 really be able to to belt out those tunes and, and right, real, yeah. you know, all those musos out there, you know, they yeah, want to... The, the machine, in fact, is your enemy uh, in, in a band like that because it's, it's all about feel uh, and how a, a bass player locks in with the drummer and how the guitarist... You know, a, a, a band sound and a band groove is a shifting thing. It, it's not always necessarily on the money. It, it moves around and it's what gives it that, that something that might set one band apart from another, you know. Um, so it, yeah, it's, it's important. You have to play, and the, the fans of metal music, much derided though they may be, they know if somebody's faking it, and yeah. they, you you don't get away with that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Britney Spears. Yeah. <laughs> to mention those. <no> <laughs> to mention no names. Yeah. So there's a lot going on with with Witch Cross at the moment. Yeah, yeah. We've got a festival coming up in um, in April in um, a town called Stadtkanal in in Holland. Uh, Holland's a big a big territory for us, so uh, we've got a festival there with a, one of the British new wave of heavy metal bands from back in the day called Tigers of Pantan. Mm -hmm. uh, they've kind of uh, they've got a bit of resurgence as well, so we're looking forward to that. And we're writing now for the for the third album, which hopefully it won't take another thirty years to come <laughs> yeah. out. Honestly, uh -huh. yeah. But I mean, it's you know, which is 
you write songs, you sing, you, you obviously you're a bass player, but you mm. do other stuff as well, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I um, um, I like to think of myself as a, a bit of a writer. I do a lot of I write a lot of poetry, a lot of a lot of prose. I've, I've, I must have about three novels I've never finished. But I'll finish one one day, uh, and I do a lot of lot of artwork as well, which is um, it's bound to happen really because Mickey and my partner is a well-known artist yeah. around the world so uh, I have a very different style it's, it's more sort of um, I would say cartoony but it's, it's, it's certainly a certain certain style and I, and I do comic strip stuff as well you know which I, I enjoy doing so yeah it's all this stuff has to come out you know never they <laughs> never worry about the creativity drying up then. no absolutely not no <laughs> I, it's, it's nice actually that I, I, I feel quite lucky to, to have these different skills because um, it's it stops you the, the freshness disappearing because you can move from writing songs for a while and perhaps do a bit of artwork mm. or do a bit of writing or whatever and uh, and often the ideas um, kind of mix and match anyway you know I'll, I'll get ideas for songs or whatever um, from something else I've written or something I've read um, so yeah the, the inspiration never never really goes away and, and living down here um, in Almeria is it, it gives you that time you need to kind of pause and, and reflect and kind of reset and, and you can really get to work without any distractions yeah. and um, it's been incredibly creative time for me I, I, certainly since since I moved here I've, I must have written um, so much more stuff in, in the last 10 years than I, than I did in the, in the previous 20 I would say that's so, interesting yeah. interesting yeah. But it's good for the, good for the creative soul, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. But you travel a lot, eh? I mean, this is it's I quite do, a rock uh, and roll yeah, lifestyle, I'm though, isn't a, it? I'm a bit of a bit of a travel junkie. Well, in fact, it's not 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 even just um, from from my professional side, but uh, we both travel a lot anyway because um, Mickey does it for her um, for, to get motif for her artwork and what have you. Uh, so we do a lot of travelling anyway. But yeah, with with the bands, it's. Um, it's not as easy to, to deal with as when I was younger, I think. You, know, you, you just sort of say, yeah, I'll get off a plane at seven in the morning, it doesn't yeah. matter. And you could handle it when you were 20. You know, it's a little harder to handle now, but, but I, I do love it, yeah, I love, I love the travel. So it is exciting then, because that's is, what yeah. we all think, yeah. people like us who don't have that kind of lifestyle, that yeah. I don't know, rock and roll, you know, travelling around the world and different places, yeah, I, or is it just like, Phew, God, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, you know, the airport lounge stuff and, yeah. um, and what have you, except when sometimes you get the chance of being an executive one or whatever. But generally speaking, it's it, that's a bit of a bind and the actual being on the plane is a bit of a bind. But yeah. I do I do like the travelling and going to different... We, we were in Scandinavia um, a month or two ago with, with Witchcross doing a short tour and, and we'd never actually, amazingly, for because the, the band's basically a Danish band, but we never played in Norway and it was our first time in Norway since the band had started 30 odd years ago. And uh, we got to the gig in Oslo, and, and there's people queuing up wearing all the gear, you know, and all the Witchcross t-shirts. And that's incredibly moving to us, you know, that, that they that they these people exist, and you really feel that it's worthwhile making the effort for these people yeah. because they want to see you, you know. Which leads me on to that. It's a bit. It's a cliche question, but I have got to ask: How do you feel? When you can hear all the, you're in some venue and there's all these fans, particularly, you know, the heavy metal fans and they're all in the gear yeah. and they're all, yeah. and you've got to get up on stage. I mean, what does it feel like when you walk out on stage and there they all are and they're, they're expecting you to be Yeah, that's, but that's, brilliant. that's my fuel, that, because you, you go, it makes you go the extra mile. Hmm. Um, because the, when I walk out on, on a stage to an audience like that, particularly the, the metal fans, because they're, they're so expected and they, they, they want want it all from you, you know, and, and you just, you, your mindset is, I'm going to deliver this, you know, and, and it, it just, it inspires you. Inspi inspires I've always you. said that if people say, how can you walk out in front of these crowds? No, no butterflies, like, no, oh, God, I'm sweating this I one. think the, the largest crowd I ever played to is probably, Thirty odd thousand oh. with with Christie, yeah. Um, and the people say, how, "How can you play to that?" And I said, "But I'd rather play to thirty thousand and thirty, and it's true because really? yeah, because they, they are. It, it's a power source for you, you know. It, it, they 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 want you to succeed, you know. Mm. They, they they so they're on your side, 
So as long as you you hit the ground running, they'll stay on your side. You know? Yeah. And and if you've ever just the, the 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 rush that you get from pointing to that amount of people and saying clap your hands, yeah, and they all do. Yeah. You're king of the world, you know. And afterwards, how do you is it you it, adrenaline? Yeah, the adrenaline. Yeah, it's um, it, it's something that. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't go away. So you, you don't sort of, you can't come off stage and then within an hour just go to bed. You know, it just doesn't really work. Yeah. Uh, and what about locally? Because obviously people who live here, you know, we like to get the chance to yeah. to see you do your stuff as well. Is it is that yeah, possible? It, it, it happens, but you've it's it's um, probably like. You know, sitting in wait, looking for a sighting of a panda or something. It, it happens, but it happens rarely. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Is it because you kind of want to just not have to perform when you're here? Partly, partly that. But um, I do like okay, performing with, locally. Uh, and if my mate Mario, who, who works down at Zambra there in um, in Touré, and we have a little bit of a band. Yeah. We've put put together a three piece now, and we, we're just running like um, putting together a, a police tribute show just for fun, you know. Oh, nice um, one. Yeah, so because it's it's good for a three piece, you know, like, yeah. like a style of stuff. It's it's a challenge for me with the vocal and bass playing, the, the sting style stuff. So uh, just to just to keep my hand in and, and play a little bit locally. Yeah, and when, so. when can we expect that? So you can expect that. Uh, <laughs> Exclusive on our movie live. <laughs> doing one or two shows mm -hmm. for. Um, for the BMW um, bike testing guys um, this month, I think the 11th, we're down on the, on the player at one of the hotels there. But yeah, we'll, we'll probably try and do a little bit of stuff in the summer. Um, nice. So keep your eyes open for yeah. that. We'll, we'll be calling it the cops if you want yeah. to show. Right, the, the cops. So when you are relaxing and unwinding here down on the down on the Costa, mm -hmm. what music do you listen to? Um, yeah. I when when I'm working. For, for example, when we were doing the, the Witchcross album, I, I tend not to listen to anything at all. Really? really? You, yeah, you, you try to um, focus on what you're doing because you don't really want to be influenced too much by any by anything else. But but yeah, when I when I listen to stuff myself, um, my my all time hero is a, a guy called Glenn Hughes that people might not be particularly familiar with, but he was uh, the bass player and sort of second singer, if you like, in Deep Purple. Right. Um, back in, in one of their phases and, and for me he's the, the greatest rock vocalist and bass player of all time anywhere um check him out glenn hughes Glenn's not to be confused you. with the guy called glenn hughes who's in the village people it's not him quite different quite different <laughs> um but yeah he's he's just amazing he's now virtually of pensionable age but you just would not his voice is it's just out of this world. my favorite I mean, style uh, i would say is probably um funk rock i like really yeah which that is surprises a much, me it's, actually it's, it's, it's a much maligned genre uh, it's not surprising when you think of me as a bass player though, mm -hmm. because the bass is a groove you yeah know? and it's um funk rock is it's not massively popular uh because the rock fans don't really like it because it's funky and the kind of funk fans don't really like it because it's too rocky so there's just a very narrow <laughs> kind of audience for it. But, you know, I'm talking about bands like Mother's Finest, who also you may not have heard of, but they're like a multiracial band with that fantastic mix of rock and guitar. Because for me, uh, headbanging's all, all great and that, but I, I, if you've got music that really makes you move, stuff like um, Get the Funk Out by Extreme, probably the, the most well-known example of a funk rock song is probably play that funky music by wild cherry yeah which everybody knows which everybody knows yeah so that's the stuff that because it's got such a great groove to play on bass but it's got screaming electric guitars in and that. so that's my kind of favorite genre and then next to that would probably be metal and what have you but I, i've got a very wide range of, of taste simply because my my job takes me into so many different styles of bands i mean which crosses is a metal bc suite is glam rock Christie is almost country rock, really. It's, mm. it's, it's um, sort of Creatures Clearwater Revival style of thing. And my solo stuff is very eclectic. Um, my last solo album, which sort of drew on influences from all of the south of uh, America and, and New Orleans and Nashville and what have you. Um, and then only later this month, I'm, I'm doing a session for a, a, an old friend of mine uh, over in the west of Ireland for a folk album. So God, that's so the total of this end of the spectrum yeah. you know? but it's great because every, it all of these experiences um help you as a songwriter and, and as a musician it's all learning you know 
it's, it's much better than being closed off um, and just saying, well, I only do this, you know. It's You're a man who likes his job, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love my job, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who just wish they had one ounce of the creative talent that you have. I've got to say, this, I, could, I, could, I could go on all day because <laughs> it's fascinating. It's a whole new world, Thank but... You. I mustn't keep you for, for too long. I mean, you've got some creating to do, for I goodness sake. Indeed, yeah, so, some creating to do. Kevin, yeah. it's been brilliant. It's been really been nice to meet you eventually as well. Yeah, thank and, you very much. Uh, fascinating, and, uh, and I hope you, you know, we do get a chance to see you, to see you play locally. Hopefully, yeah, that keep your eye out. It'll, uh, it'll happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so thanks very much. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. thanks.